Hi, this video considers, uh, concerns derivatives of trig functions. And I will first write all the derivatives. You should know these. They are obviously listed. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of cosine of x is the negative of sine of x. The derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. The derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. The derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x. The derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. You would be better off if you memorize these. They will occur throughout from here on, at different points in time in the semester. So you'll need to know them. The more that you have memorized, the better in terms of this. Um, now, I will show how this first derivative occurs, or why we get that. That is the derivative. And then I'll talk about the others after that. The derivative of sine of x, going back to our definition. Remember the... Definition of derivative, limit, h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. This is our definition of the derivative. In this case, my function is sine, so this becomes sine of x plus h minus sine of x, all divided by h. Now we use a trig identity which you should know, sine of x plus h is not sine of x plus sine of h. Do not break it apart that way. It is sine of x cosine of h plus cosine of x sine of h minus sine of x all divided by h, which I am going to reorder these and kind of group. Notice that this has a sine of x and this sine of x. I'm going to factor out a sine of x out of those two and left with cosine of h minus 1 plus cosine of x sine of h all divided by h. We have rules for limits. We can Break this apart. First, let me break apart the algebra. Limit h approaches 0. Sine of x times cosine of h minus 1 over h plus cosine of x sine of h over h. We can then break apart the limit. Limit h approaches 0, sine of x, cosine of h minus 1 over h, plus limit h approaches 0, cosine of x, sine of h over h. My variable, or what we're considering like a variable, is h, and so x has nothing to do with it. I can pull that out in front of the limit, so this is the sine of x times, the limit as h approaches 0, cosine of h minus 1 over h, plus, same thing here, cosine of x, limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h. These are indeterminate limits, but they have nice values. The limit h approaches 0, this is in your book, of sine h over h is 1. And the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h is 0. And so this becomes sine of x times 0 plus cosine of x 
times 1, and voila, we get the derivative that I mentioned over there, cosine of x. A lot of work. The um, show the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x can be done the same way. You use a different trig identity in this step right here. After that, same basic algebra. The rest of these can be shown using the quotient rule. Assuming that you have these, use the quotient rule to get these. So those follow simply. Okay, now let's assume that we know all those, because I do, and we will now do some examples using that. Just a couple of basic derivatives. If I have y equals 3x squared tangent of x plus 4 secant of x. We just have now um, added to our derivative things that we can take, you know, functions that we can take the derivative of. This first part is a product, so I have to use the product rule first. Well, the number stays. I'm going to consider this my first. First times the derivative of the second, the derivative of tangent of x was secant squared of x plus second times the derivative of the first, which is 6x, plus the derivative here, 4 stays, derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x. And so we get 3x squared secant squared of x plus 6x tangent of x plus 4 secant of x tangent of x. Let me do an example that is written out for you where it also involves an application. Suppose I have y equals secant of x over 1 plus tangent of x. And I want to know, where does this have horizontal tangent lines? Okay. Now, uh, first off, horizontal tangent lines, this means that the derivative is zero. Tangent line, the slope of a tangent line is the derivative at a value, so um, we want to know where the derivative is zero. Horizontal line has slope zero. Where is the slope zero? So, where is the slope of the tangent line zero? I need the derivative. Bottom times the derivative of the top, which is secant of x tangent of x, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, which is secant squared of x. The derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of tangent is secant squared all over the bottom squared. That is my derivative. I want to know where this derivative is 0. Do not put equal 0 on this line. We need a new line. So I have, I will distribute this. Secant of x tangent of x plus secant of x tangent squared of x minus secant cubed of x over 1 plus tangent of x quantity squared is equal to 0. This is what I need to solve. So first thing I'll do is get rid of my denominator. I have an equation. I'll multiply both sides. Um, also, I can notice I have three terms here on top. 
Let me do this. I have three terms here on top. Each of these terms have a secant of x, so I'm going to factor that out at the same time. So I get secant of x times tangent of x plus tangent squared of x minus secant squared of x equals 0. That was nice. Multiplying both sides by the denominator, 0 times anything is 0. That just goes away. Now, we have a product equal to 0, which means either secant of x is equal to 0 or tangent of x plus tangent squared of x minus secant squared of x is equal to 0. I will deal with the first one here in a minute. Let me deal with the second one right now because we need to kind of simplify that. Hopefully you recognize or remember that there is some kind of uh, trig identity that involves tangent squared and secant squared. So in case you don't remember, your basic, most basic trig identity, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1 the most basic trig identity. From that, we can derive two other trig identities, very simply. Divide by sine squared, and I get 1 plus cotangent squared of x is equal to cosecant squared of x. If I divide each of my terms by sine squared, if I divide each of my terms by cosine squared, I get tangent squared of x plus 1 is equal to secant squared of x. Or, notice, since I have in my original equation up there, tangent squared of x minus secant squared of x, that is equal to negative 1. So, through that nice little trig identity, this becomes tangent of x minus 1 is equal to 0, or tangent of x is equal to 1. Now that is simple to solve. You should know tangent of x equals 1 means that x is equal to pi over 4 plus 2k pi, 2n pi, as I think is what the book does. This is your first quadrant values or x is equal to 5 pi over 4 plus 2n pi. These are your third quadrant values. In this case, if you wanted to, we can combine that and just say x is equal to pi over 4 plus n pi. Works out nicely. The second, or going back to my first possible solution, Secant of x equals 0. Remember, that would be 1 over cosine of x is 0, which would mean 1 equals 0, and this is impossible. So therefore, these are my values. This, uh, by the way, was number 6 in the worked out homework problems.